R squared, P values, effect size, significance. Let's talk about it. StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. In this video, we're going to continue our series on logistic regression and we're going to talk about R squared and P values. In the StatQuest, logistic regression details part two fitting a line with maximum likelihood, we had weight measurements for obese mice, and weight measurements for some mice that were not obese. And we converted the y-axis from probability to the log odds of obesity, and then fit a line to that data using maximum likelihood. Well, technically, we maximize the log likelihood, but either way you do it, you get the same best fitting line. However, we ended with a bit of a cliffhanger. We know that the line is best fit, but how do we know if it is useful? In other words, how do we calculate R squared and a p-value for the relationship between weight and obesity? The answer is, it's complicated. Although the idea behind generalized linear models, a common framework for solving all kinds of problems, is nice, the result is a bit of a hot mess. Even though pretty much everyone agrees on how to calculate R squared and the associated p-value for linear models, there is no consensus on how to calculate R squared for logistic regression. There are more than 10 different ways to do it. So, before you settle on a way to calculate R squared for logistic regression, look and see what other people are already doing in your field. That will give you a good starting point. For this stat quest, rather than describe every single R squared for logistic regression, I'm focusing on one that is commonly used and is easily calculated from the output that R gives you. Just so you know, this R squared is called McFadden's pseudo R squared. Another bonus is that this method is very similar to how R squared is calculated for regular old linear models. So let's do a super quick review of R squared for regular old linear models using size and weight measurements as an example so that the concepts are fresh in your mind. Wow, that was a long sentence. In linear regression and other linear models, R squared and the related p-value are calculated using the residuals. In brief, we square the residuals and then add them up. I call this SS fit for sum of squares of the residuals around the best fitting line. And we compare that to the sum of squared residuals around the worst fitting line, the mean of the y-axis values. This is called SS mean. R squared compares a measure of a good fit, SS fit, to a measure of a bad fit, SS mean. R squared is the percentage of variation around the mean that goes away when you fit a line to the data. Also, because I want to refer to this later, I'm going to point out another thing you already know. R squared goes from zero to one. If there wasn't a relationship between weight and size, the data might look like this, and the best fitting line might look like this. In this case, SS fit equals SS mean. And when we plug in the values for SS fit and SS mean, we get zero in the numerator, and then R squared equals zero. On the other hand, when the line fits the data perfectly, SS fit equals zero. And that means when we plug in the values for SS fit and SS mean, we get SS mean minus zero in the numerator. And then R squared equals one. Duh. I told you this was something you already knew. Now let's talk about R squared in terms of logistic regression. Like linear regression, we need to find a measure of a good fit to compare to a measure of a bad fit. Unfortunately, the residuals for logistic regression are all infinite, so we can't use them. But we can project the data onto the best fitting line, and then we translate the log odds back to probabilities. 
And lastly, calculate the log likelihood of the data given the best fitting squiggle. In this case, that gives us negative 3.77. We can call this LL fit for the log likelihood of the fitted line and use it as a substitute for SS fit. Now we need a measure of a poorly fitted line that is analogous to SS mean. We do this by calculating the log odds of obesity without taking weight into account. The overall log odds of obesity is just the total number of obese mice divided by the total number of mice that are not obese. Then we just take the log of the whole thing and do the math. In this case, we get a horizontal line at 0.22. Then project the data onto this line. And then we translate the log odds back to probabilities. That gives us a horizontal line at p equals 0.56. Note, the overall log odds, 0.22, translates to the overall probability of being obese, 0.56. In other words, we can arrive at the same solution by calculating the overall probability of obesity. Hooray! They are the same so we have two different ways to calculate the exact same number. Now calculate the log likelihood of the data given the overall probability of obesity. This gives us negative 6.18. We'll call this LL overall probability and use it as a substitute for SS mean. So we have LL overall probability, a measure of a bad fit, and LL fit, hopefully a measure of a good fit. And it makes intuitive sense that we could combine them just like we combined SS mean and SS fit to calculate R squared. Plugging in the numbers gives us an R squared value equals 0.39. Bam! However, before we get too excited, Let's verify that calculating R squared with these log likelihoods will result in a value between 0 when the fit is bad and 1 when the fit is good. Let's start by looking at the R squared we'll get when weight is not a good predictor of obesity. There are light mice that are obese and light mice that are not obese. And there are heavy mice that are obese and heavy mice that are not obese. Intuitively, we can see that, with this data, weight makes a poor predictor of obesity. The maximum likelihood, best fitting, line for this data has an intercept of negative 0.22 and a slope of practically 0, 5.10 to the negative 17 to be exact, on the log odds scale. And this translates to a horizontal line at 0.45 on the probability scale. LL fit is the log likelihood of the data projected onto the best fitting line. And that value is negative 6.18. Now let's calculate LL overall probability. The first step is simply to calculate the overall probability of obesity. That gives us a line at 0.44. LL overall probability is the log likelihood of the data projected onto the overall probability. In this case, LL overall probability equals negative 6.18. Now let's just plug in the values for LL overall probability and LL fit. When we do the math, we get R squared equals zero. Bam! Now let's look at the R squared we'll get when weight is an awesome predictor of obesity. The maximum likelihood best fitting line for this data has an intercept of negative 63.72 and a slope of 22.42. And this translates to a squiggly line on the probability scale. LL fit is the log likelihood of the data projected onto the best fitting line. 
In this case, LL fit equals zero. That's because the log of one equals zero. So LL fit is just the sum of a bunch of zeros. Now let's calculate the overall probability of obesity. And that gives us a line at 0 0.44. LL overall probability is the log likelihood of the data projected onto the overall probability. In this case, that value is negative 6.18. At this point, you may have noticed something. When the model is a poor fit, the log likelihood for logistic regression is a relatively large negative value. And when the model is a good fit, the log likelihood for logistic regression is a value close to zero. Log likelihoods for logistic regression will always be between zero and negative infinity because we are taking logs of values between zero and one. And good fits result in log likelihoods close to zero and bad fits result in larger negative log likelihoods. Okay, back to calculating R squared. Let's plug in the values for LL overall probability and LL fit. This gives us an R squared equals one. Double bam. So we see that, at least on an intuitive level, the R squared calculated with log likelihoods behaves like the R squared calculated from sums of squares. The log likelihood R squared values go from zero for poor models to one for good models. Now we need a p-value. The good news is that calculating the p-value is pretty straightforward. Two times the difference between LL fit and LL overall probability equals a chi-squared value with degrees freedom equal to the difference in the number of parameters in the two models. LL fit has two parameters since it needs estimates for a y-axis intercept and a slope. LL overall probability has one parameter since it only needs an estimate for a y-axis intercept. So, in this case, the degrees of freedom equals one. Here's a graph of a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. In the worst case scenario, LL fit equals LL overall probability and the whole thing equals zero. In this case, the p-value equals one since the area under the curve from zero to infinity equals one. However, most of the time, LL fit will be closer to zero than LL overall probability. And since the log likelihoods are negative, this will be a positive value on the x-axis, and the p-value will get smaller. In the example we've worked out in this stat quest, we end up with 4.82 for the chi-squared distribution, and the p-value equals 0.03. Thus, the relationship between weight and obesity is not due to chance, and the R-squared value, 0.39, tells us the effect size of this relationship. Triple bam! Before we leave, there are a few things I need to point out. When you see these formulas for R-squared and the associated p-value out in the wild, they will look more like this. This is because the formulas usually include terms for the saturated model. I'll talk more about the saturated model in another stat quest. For now, however, just know that when doing logistic regression, the log likelihood of the saturated model equals zero, so we can omit it. And when we omit the term for the saturated model, we get the simple equations I've presented in this stat quest. However, the log likelihood of the saturated model isn't always zero when it is used with other generalized linear models. So people include it when talking about the log likelihood R squared and associated p-value so that it'll work in other situations. But don't worry, we'll talk about these topics in a stat quest on the saturated model and deviance statistics. 
Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, please click the like button below and consider buying one or two of my original songs. Alright, until next time, quest on!